real quick as we're standing, obviously we're going into worship, and the Lord brought something to me um, when he was talking um, about hearing the voice of God. And it brought me to this time um, when I was um, traveling in a part of a traveling ministry, um, and we were going to, I believe, Wisconsin at the time. Um, and we were tired and we were on the road for a long time trying to figure out like where we're going to sleep and what we're going to do and whatever that night. And so um, we f were driving and we saw a sign for a hotel and I and we said, okay, we're going to stop over here. We're going to go and we're going to spend the night here and then we'll move on. I got a real check in my, my spirit about it. And I, the Lord brought me to this crazy vision. Um, so I had this vision of this old woman or demonic spirit, I should say, sitting in the corner of this hotel room. And I, then I saw blood. And I was like, and immediately I came out of the vision and I said, I don't think we're supposed to go to this hotel. And we were actually just pulling up to the hotel. And um, and then we were like, you know, <laughs> I was hearing from the Lord and, and the others were there were just kind of like, oh, I don't know, like they were out, like in the flesh, you know, when you get tired, you get in the flesh. And they were kind of battling back and forth. And I was like, I just don't think we're supposed to stay here. I don't really feel like this is where God wants us. Um, so we just proceeded to go, still go in, and I was just praying. And the hotel clerk, we said, hey, do you have any rooms available? And they said, okay, well, we have this room available. And we walked in the room, and it was the same exact room that the Lord had given me my vision. And I walked back out, and I said, I went to the hotel clerk, I said, did something happen in this room? And she says, yes, someone was murdered in that room like two weeks ago. And so, like, it just, it just, like, floored me that, that I knew that there was something, like, God was keeping us safe from. And if we take the time to hear what God is saying and what God is doing, he'll keep us from getting in a place that we can't, that we don't want to go. You know, and so, Lord, I just pray for prophetic insight, Lord. I just pray that your voice would override every voice that we hear, Lord. And that you love us that much, God, to watch out for us and look out for us. And so just one more other thing that I um, felt like it was the Lord had wanted me to share was I emailed, Karen, if you can put that picture up. Actually, can you do the other one first? Now, take a look. If you can big size that, is there a way you can big size it? Just in the middle. See, now if you see just in the middle, he looks like this, like the angel's going like this. And I heard the Lord saying that when I saw that, he said, I'm fighting your battles for you. And I'm coming to you quickly, says the Lord. He says, I'm coming quickly to you. And it was like Superman, like, but it was like an, it was a, it was an angel that the Lord had set over Colorado. And you can see his fist out. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and if you go to the other one, look at the cross. Do you guys see that? So this was, I saw this on the day that we had the, um, the uh, when the, the shadow comes in front of the moon, or what is that called? The, the eclipse. <laughs> and I saw the cross and I said, the Lord's saying right now that he is elevating the message of the cross. And so as we look at that, as we see that, we just declare God that the message of the cross The message of the cross elevated. 
and God, where, an, where the enemy would come in and try to take out the message of the cross. Lord, we decree right now that deaf ears will fall to that. And we thank you for the message of the cross because it all started there. So we just, even as we see that, we just turn your eyes upon
eyes. Let's taste and see again that the Lord is good. Take a big drink. Take a big drink. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's take a big drink this morning. right here and it means this it's something that can never be satisfied you're always going to want more and more and more and more of it our 
hunger for God never decreases, it always increases. Whoo, man, I've got the fire on my bones this morning. Do you want the fire in your bones? Come on. I'm tired of letting the world, if you're tired of letting the world, the things of the world, water down your walk with God, let's just begin to lift your hands to the Lord. Say, God, I'm done with the watered down lifestyle. I want the fired up lifestyle. I want the fire of the Holy Spirit on my life. And whatever I gotta go through to get it, God, I'm going through it to get it. Cause I want the fire of God on my life. Burn out the same old. When they said they were table, and they were talking about sitting at the table, I went and looked at what does that mean spiritual what's the spiritual significance of the table and what I found is when you go to the table you go and you sit and you sit quietly you eat slowly you take it in slowly the table is where all brokenness is gone away where the sinners make connections and belonging and the table represents God's goodness, God's love, and God's grace. And as Jerry was saying, just taking that in, eating that slowly, digesting it over and over again, not rushing it, just letting it fill you up. And that's what that significance of table spiritually means about your table at home when you go there you eliminate all other distractions and just focus on each other and making that connection and belonging with each other and I heard the Lord say as he was filling the cup of overflowing I heard him say, I'm turning the water into wine. The wine of the Holy Spirit. The new wine filling your cup. I want the new wine. I just really sense that the Holy Spirit just wants to do a, just a sovereign work right now. He just wants to touch everyone in this place. Snug 
tendency to pick up more than you're supposed to. And I just hear the Lord saying, it's just time to let that go. Whatever that looks like to you. It's just time to let it go. So, Lord, I just let it go. And I heard the Lord saying, it's just time for you to breathe again. Just go ahead and just take a deep breath. Because some of you haven't 
been able to take a deep breath in a long time. You've been so stressed. And I actually see the Lord taking stress off your lungs because it's actually given you a lung issue because of the stress that you had in your lives. And you're just going to have a deep breath again. fresh air so the Lord is just removing the toxic air that you've been breathing in for so long and he's giving you fresh air finally saying I'm, I'm unloosening the tightness. There's tightness going on in your body. There's tightness going on around you and your schedules. And I just feel like the Lord is saying he wants to let's loosen this tightness that you have and have been carrying. He just wants to relieve everyone here from stress, tightness, Yes, it's, it's time to be loose and have fun and live life again. And I am getting from Mary. I just hear the Lord for you. As I hear the Lord saying, it's time just let the stress go and then it's time just to breathe again and live life again and I hear the Lord saying that he's freshening the flowers again for you and like and I hear the Lord saying that he's watering your garden and I just saw you like going out to the garden and I just saw you like picking out these new flowers you were you walked out and you just had this like just this new like you just walked out and you picked up this flower and you smelled it and the aroma of this flower was so strong and as you breathed it in it's like God is breathing in a new aroma in you and I even smell it now I just I just feel like the Lord is saying that he's he's freshening the aroma surroundings like the surroundings you've had, God is, he's just saying, I, I'm freshening those surroundings around you. And he says, everything is going to start smelling differently now. That it's not going to be like it was before. It's not going to smell like it used to. God is just, he's refreshing. And, I, and it's like, I saw, <laughs> it's really cool picture. I saw like angels coming over you and like spraying you with Febreze. <laughs> You know, but it's like, you know, but it's the aroma of Christ, you know, and, and, and so I just want to sort of see in you and, and I, I just see it's, it's, the Lord has, has called you. I heard the Lord saying that I've called you to be a difference maker. And the, and the differences have tried to make you. But what I hear the Lord saying is it's time for you to make those different because the differences around you will no longer be the same anymore because God is changing every circumstance around your life. And so, Lord, we just bless her. Father, we thank you 
right now for the reign of the Holy Spirit to come upon her, Lord, and her family, Lord. celebrate with joy do not grieve uh, and here's the scripture that he gave me and this confirms what uh, Jerry was saying then Nehemiah the governor Ezra the priest and teacher of the law and the Levites who were instructing the people and this is what I got God's instructing us right now and he's giving us a word and it's a time to be joyful and celebrate um, so he was instructing the people, said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people that had been weeping as they listened to the words of the Lord, Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks wow. and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our God. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food, and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Remember, we are still in tabernacles and that is a celebration so let's all stand we're gonna bring this wedding in with a bang i tell you this wedding we're gonna be rejoicing so let's rejoice as we enter into this awesome marriage and wedding and we're gonna celebrate we're gonna dance we're gonna rejoice with each other i love when the holy ghost takes over he directs us even when we don't know where he's going i love it
lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only king forever.
right now to our face, Facebook and live stream. We're going to shut it down. And then we're going to bring it back up because we want it on a separate archive for the family.